Um, good evening. Um, welcome, Anna, Marianne, and Father. I uh, appreciate you guys showing up for the um, excuse me uh, overview of the Doctor of Psychology, PsyD, and Clinical Psychology program. Uh, my name is. There we go. My name is Tom Brooks. I'm the Vice President for Enrollment and Marketing here at Divine Mercy University. And I'll be doing the overview this evening for you. One of the uh, things that I would tell you is that we do have a chat section and uh, I'll answer as many questions as I can at the end, if that's okay. So if you have some questions, put them in there and then um, we will uh, get to them as we get to the end. I'm sure that we'll have other folks join. That's kind of the way it happens. Um, but I look forward to your questions and uh, I hope you get some information you need out of this presentation tonight. And uh, again, my name is Tom Brooks and we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, first, welcome to Divine Mercy University. DMU is a Catholic institution comprised of two schools. It is dedicated to the scientific study of psychology with a Catholic Christian understanding of the person marriage and family. Um, we were founded in 1999 as the Institute for Psychological Sciences or IPS. In 2014, the Institute launched its MS in Psychology program online with its focus on educating working professionals. And then in 2015, IPS was renamed Divine Mercy University with the addition of our School of Counseling. As mentioned, we have the School of Counseling and it currently offers an MS in counseling. It's called, it's an online hybrid program with um, everything being online except a residency program where you come in for five days once a year during the program, which is three times. And then under the IPS school, which is the Institute for Psychological Sciences, we have the PsyD in clinical psychology. That's a fully residential program, meaning campus-based and it's in our Sterling location. And then we have an MS in psychology online. It's not a degree, I'm, I'm sorry, it's not a licensing program, uh, but a helping degree. The mission of DMU is to provide students with an effective academic and educational environment that supports the integration of the psychological sciences and a Christian, Catholic Christian understanding of the person. We prepare students to respond to their vocation as mental health professionals. We're located in Sterling, Virginia, roughly about 40 miles from Washington, DC. And um, for those of you know the Virginia area, we are very close to Dulles Airport. Um, as you can see from some of the pictures, we have all kinds of activities. We're, you know, to the northwest of us is the uh, wine country of Northern Virginia. A little bit further from that is Harpers Ferry, West Virginia, and a lot of um, historical areas. Uh, and you can do everything up there from hiking the Appalachian Trail to whitewater rafting, floating on tubes, kayaking, paddle boarding, or all kinds of things like that. Conversely, you can go down to uh, DC, um, check out all the you know, things in Washington, DC. And, um, and you're really only a couple, two, three hours away from the um, ocean as well with um, uh, Ocean City, Maryland and Virginia Beach, both not too far from us. Accreditation and approvals. Um, there's two types of approvals. There's the institutional approval that universities have and, and that's how they are allowed to operate. And then there's programmatic accreditation or certain types of programs that require that. Divine Mercy University is institutionally accredited by the SACS-COC, which stands for the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools and the Commission on Colleges. Similar colleges that are associated with SACS or accredited by SACS are Florida State, um, Texas, or no, I'm sorry, uh, Wake Forest, um, Duke, North Carolina, things like, uh, schools like that. Um, SACS is recognized as an accrediting agency of colleges and schools by the Department of Education. DMU voluntarily partic participated in the accrediting process, and we either met or exceeded all standards in thorough evaluations, and we just recently were awarded another 10-year 
uh, reaccreditation. We're approved to operate by the state of Virginia, the State Council of Higher Education in Virginia. Our PsyD program has been recognized since 2006 as a national registered designation program by the Association of State and Provisional Psychology Boards. The PsyD program has been credit, accredited by the APA, American Psychological Association, since 2016. So that's our programmatic accreditation. And Divine Mercy University has been approved to participate in the National Council for State Authorization Reciprocity Agreements, or what we call NC SARA. And that's what allows us to work with our students in an online capacity across the United States. Clinical psychology. Clinical psychology is a psychological specialty that provides continuing and comprehensive mental and behavioral health care for individuals and families, consultation to agencies and communities, training, education and supervision, and research-based practice. The program structure and clinical experience for the PsyD program. To graduate from the school, you need 122 credit hours, inclusive of both as MSci and PsyD programs. We get the question a lot of, can I get my master's in uh, clinical psychology, which we call the MSci, or do I have to go through the PsyD? These, these days you need a PsyD in order to practice as a licensed uh, clinician. Um, but in addition to earning your PsyD program, along the way you'll actually graduate with your MSci. So you will have two different degrees. You'll have your master's level and then your PsyD level. Um, and again, the PsyD, the MSci is learned at, or obtained along the way to your uh, PsyD program. In total, it's a five-year program on site in Sterling, Virginia, and it prepares for licensure as a clinical psychologist. Year one coursework, you start your dissertation research and you start your coursework, predominantly books, classroom work, things like that. Year two, again, more coursework and you start an externship. Year three, coursework and externship, and year four is coursework and externship. And then year five is your pre-doctoral internship and you defend your dissertation and there's no classes. So you literally start working in a clinic in year two. That's what they uh, talk about externship. And then you can also apply for site to sites for your externship, such as some of the ones listed down here, St. Elizabeth's Hospital, the Psychiatric Hospital in Washington, D.C., the VA Medical Center in Martinsburg, Virginia. 85% of our students are matched with an APA credit or APIC member internship site. And this was 2017 and 2018. And actually, for the last couple of years, we've been pretty close to 100%. So is the PsyD program right for you? Do you want to help people flourish? Are you interested in the science behind human behavior? Do you want to become an instrument of healing through the psychological sciences? Are you interested in performing psychological tests and assessments to diagnose your clients and create treatment plans? Are you looking to start a career as a licensed mental health professional, specifically, specifically as a clinical psychologist? Key areas of competency achieved through the PsyD program. In order to do these things that we just mentioned on the earlier page and to get licensed, you really need to understand, uh, you know, the full uh, breadth of the PsyD program and what you'll learn along the way. Part of it is foundations in psychological sciences and research, integrity and in practice, assessment and diagnosis, therapeutic intervention, professional roles, and clinical practice from a Catholic integrated perspective. The picture you see to the right is actually um, one of our graduations at the Basilica in Washington, DC. Key areas of competency achieved through the PsyD program. The first one is foundations in psychological sciences and research. Graduates will attain foundational psychological sciences, knowledge of biological, cognitive, effective, social, and developmental aspects of the human person as well as history and systems of psychology, psychological measurement, research design, and statistical methods. 
Graduates will have the skills necessary to conduct their own psychological research. Second is integrity and practice. Graduates will be knowledgeable in the areas of diversity and ethics and display critical thinking, self-aware slash reflective practice and self-care. Graduates will demonstrate responsiveness to supervision, collegiality and professional comportment and professional practice. The third element is assessment and diagnosis. Graduates will be able to conduct clinical interviewing, perform intake evaluation, demonstrate knowledge in the administration scoring and interpretation of psychological assessment, integrate multiple sources of test data and clinical interview information into a written report, diagnose and develop a treatment plan. Number four is therapeutic intervention. Graduates will be able to demonstrate case conceptualization, treatment planning, building and maintaining the therapeutic relationship, psychotherapy skills, crisis management of urgent and special circumstances, and discharge planning. The fifth competency is professional roles. Graduates will be able to function in a variety of required roles of professional psychologists to include consultant, educator, supervisor, practice manager, and program evaluator. They will be able to work collaboratively, collaboratively sorry, with in interdisciplinary teams and with clients. Sixth competency is clinical practice from a Catholic integrated perspective. Graduates will have a developed, I'm sorry, graduates will have developed a Catholic understanding of the human flourishing in the individual person and marriage and family life and be able to integrate this with the psychological sciences and a clinical practice. So some sample employment tracks, where's some of the places you can apply your trade, as they say. Obviously, you can be a licensed clinical psychologist. You can be a clinic director. You can be a psychiatric technician, psychiatric crisis unit interviewer, community mental health social worker, drug abuse social worker, drug and alcohol specialist, certified alcohol or drug counselors, therapists, and they're actually credentialed as CACs or CADCs, professional psychological resource advisor, psych psychological behavioral therapist, and health project director, group home director. Some places, depending on the state that you're in, may require additional education or certification or licensure. Note that for the above listed, all are part, all are for the practice of doctoral level. Again, some states required additional coursework, additional hours of instruction or supervision uh, in order for you to be able to uh, act in one of these roles or any other roles under this program. Um, some of our students, um, James uh, Walbuck is in was in our clinical psychology program. The training is focused on the healing of the whole person. Kristen Long said, I was drawn to this ID program out of a desire to serve others in a more profound way than my previous positions offered. Timothy Weiss says, this school is not afraid to teach you what it means to be human at every level, psychologically, philosophically, and theologically. That's why I like it. And Kirsten Curtis, I'm so thankful for DMU. The faculty members are very supportive and I receive a lot of hands-on clinical experience. All right, we're going to do one video. This is um, William Johnston, and it's regarding treating PTSD in combat veterans. Hi, my name is William Johnston, and I'm a PsyD student at Divine Mercy University, currently approaching the end of my third year in the program. Military service runs in my family, and, um, and so both my grandparents served, my parents both served. This door, the PsyD program at Divine Mercy University opened the opportunity for me to continue to get back, to conduct research and hopefully implement a more robust program to treat PTSD as it relates to combat veterans. DMU has certainly provided the integration that I've sought in terms of my formation, both the philosophy and theology core in addition to the psychology curriculum, 
has provided me growth in terms of my faith um, and my role as a husband and father, and of course a psychological clinician. Um, so in essence, uh, the Catholic Christian meta model of the human person is, is why I'm here, both for my own sake, as well as the sake of my future clients. We'll do one more, and this is acquiring knowledge and skills at DMU from one of our alumni, Veritree Fonrom. I would say that being a student at DUI Mercy University or DMU is one of the best things that happens to me. I really appreciate a great support from faculty members and also classmates. I have gained a great deal of knowledge in all aspects of clinical practice, research, and also professional development. DMU not only provides students with strong academic skills, but also prepares them for a career in psychology. I personally benefit from mentorship with academic advisor and clinical supervisors. As a person, what I most appreciate from DMU is that its mission helped broaden my perspectives in understanding a human person through the lens of Catholicism, Catholic principle, especially in hope, love, and faith, are very valuable and certainly helped me become a better clinician. All right, uh, let's talk a little bit about our, some of our faculty and their specializations. Um, Dr. Lisa Klawicki, who is the program director specialized in adolescent, adult, and couples therapy. Uh, Dr. Diane Graves is assistant program director and professor specializing in child therapy development and psychology. Uh, Dr. Anna Pecoraro, associate professor, clinical supervisor specialized in addictions and trauma treatment. Dr. Philip Scrafani, professor, clinical supervisor, clinical psychology, specialized in cognitive behavioral therapy and group therapy. Dr. William J. Nordling is a professor, clinical supervisor, specialized credentials in child, marriage, and family therapy. And Dr. Paul Witz, senior scholar and professor, specialized in integration of Christian theology with psychology. And Dr. Nordling and Dr. Witz, along with uh, another one of our professors, Dr. Titus, um, recently uh, um, wrote and uh, published a uh, book on Catholic psychology that's won a couple of awards and is now being uh, integrated into some uh, classrooms across the country. Um, and it's on the Catholic Christian meta model of the person. Licensing, is licensing required? A license, in, license to practice is required by each state and or jurisdiction where individuals might practice as a counselor. When licensing process begins after the student completes the practicum and internship and officially graduates from DMU program. States can and often do have additional differing requirements. Students are responsible for checking state requirements where they plan to work and adhere to them. These typically include national state exams. DMU, sorry, DMU will provide general information related to licensure during the student experience. Who initiates licensing? Uh, licensing is a student-driven process. It is important for the student to begin research of licensing requirements in the state he or she intends to work in as early in the program as possible. Will students be fully licensed after graduation? No, graduates must work approximately one year in a supervised clinical environment in addition to other state requirements to be licensed. The graduate may be required to obtain a provisional license for this year period. Basically check your state requirements. And if you have questions, we do have faculty members and advisors that are there to uh, you know, advise you on your different state requirements. The lifelong impact of investing in your education. Um, 
as an example, if you buy a car, uh, your, your investment depreciates over the years. Year one, it's not too bad, but by year six, you don't have much value in that car. Conversely, you know, education investment, the more you um, work, the longer you work, the more your investment grows through pay, through, you know, value of your services, those kind of things. So um, the PsyD program, just as a, a note, is also one of those programs where if you work at certain um, places, like let's say the VA, nonprofits and, other, uh, and others, you can actually have your student tuition um, paid. <clears throat> your investment in your education. Um, currently it's $1,095 uh, per credit. And if you multiply that by the 122 credits that are required, it's 133,590. And that does not include fees and indirect expenses. Indirect expenses are basically your living expenses, uh, food, things like that while you're here. Some options for you are uh, to go through what we call a Title IV uh, option, which is uh, getting a loan from the government, federal aid, for those who qualify, William D. Ford Federal Direct Student Loan Program, including unsubsidized Stafford loans and Graduate Plus loans. Financial, the financial aid department will work with each student on an individual basis to see what you qualify for and um, how best to move forward in, in working through that process. Additionally, when our students come to campus, we have student assistantships and we do have a federal work study program of course, there's scholarships, internal and external. And if you go to the divinemercy.edu website and financial aid, you can look at the current scholarships. And then we also have um, some alternative financing options, cash plans, if you're lucky enough to have and you know uh, money sitting there for your education. Obviously, we can set up internally interest-free uh, cash payments private funds, um, agencies and organizations, what we call matching funds, possible grant programs, um, support groups, some can be funded by their uh, parish, a diocese, a business. Um, we've had students that have been supported by all kinds of different folks, private donors. Um, diocesan investment, which I just mentioned, and we are approved for veterans funding. Um, and we basically are approved for all the different chapters. Um, so how do you make graduate school affordable? Early admission scholarships. Those of you that are looking at starting in fall of 2023, um, we have already uh, launched the application for next year's start and um, you know, we tell everybody, get your scholarships in early. You can earn up to $3,000 just by getting your, um, I'm not your scholarships, your application in um, early. We have a Newman scholarship. You can earn up to 5,000, Faith and Hope. Uh, and I won't read all of these, but you can see all the different types of uh, scholarships we have. And um, in addition, the PsyD program has a 50% uh, scholarship that's awarded to a student and then we have two 25% scholarships that are awarded to students as well. And we're capped at the number of students that will actually start each program um, or each year. We only have one start in a PsyD program and that's um, 18 to 19 students is pretty much all we'll take. So, you know, as you can imagine, it's competitive for the 50% and two 25%, but there's a ton of different types of scholarships that we do have available. And then we currently have a, a program called Memorandum of Understanding, where we have agreements with um, all kinds of different businesses, dioceses, um, parishes, ministries, um, companies that um, are supportive of their folks coming here. And some of them are as high as 35%. So let's talk about entrance requirements. The baccalaureate degree from a regionally accredited or internationally recognized school, you'll need um, undergraduate degree in psychology preferred, uh, not required. 
but students admitted without an under, undergraduate degree in psychology will be required to complete prerequisite courses during the first year of their program. You need a minimum GPA of 3.0 on a, on a scale of 4.0, and applicants with an accumulative GPA of less than 3.0 may be considered for admission on a case-by-case -case basis. Application process. One, complete the online application. Two, our financial aid office will begin working with you upon receipt of the application. Three, consistent communication is maintained. Four, once all documents are sub submitted, competitive applicants are invited to an interview on site. We do have three interviews. Um, one is in um, November, I believe. The other one is in February or January. I apologize, maybe late January. And then the last one I believe is in March. Um, we do have that on our website as well. And um, this one, I apologize, the note says, um, well, number five, all applicants will hear back with an admission decision by mid-February. And um, that actually should say March, I apologize. And a program begins on site August of 2023. How to complete your application package, um, online application form, um, part one, inclusive of $55 application fee, Part two, essays and resume. Then you'll be required to provide three recommendations, at least two of which must be academic in nature. Official transcripts from all post-secondary institutions. And then you will need to uh, have an official GRE general test scores using, and then the code, our code is 5639. And they need to be within the past five years. So if you've already taken your GRE, um, that's great as long as it's under five years. And then uh, if you haven't, you would need to take your GRE uh, preferably before your interview date. So uh, I'm not sure if there's, is there anybody on here who is um, an international, potential international applicant? If you are, just um, kind of raise your hand or put your uh, something in the chat and let me know. Okay, I see a couple of hands. Three hands, all right. So we'll go through this piece so you'll understand. Um, for international applicants and applicants whose baccalaureate degree was earned at an institution outside of the US, please note the following. Applicants holding degrees from outside the United States must submit an international transcripts to an NACES, NACES approved evaluation service, such as west.org or edperspective.org for a course by, by course evaluation of their transcripts. Applicants holding degrees from outside the United States must demonstrate post-secondary education that is, is at minimum equivalent to a US bachelor's degree. If the credential is not in English, the credential must be translated in English and cost for the evaluation will be the responsibility of the students. Applicants whose primary language is not English may need to take the TOEFL or the IELTS test. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. I have asked you guys to hold your questions to the end, so I appreciate that. I see um, we have one person saying yes from India, so welcome, Ronald. And then, um, well, I appreciate everybody joining us. I am, uh, again, I'm available. As you can see, my credentials are right there. Um, I'll give you my actual um, direct line. It's 703-416-1161. Or if you're really interested, you can jump online, start your application. And when you do, that will be sent to one of our admissions advisors, uh, either Steve Showalter or um, early August, a gentleman by the name of Bradley Cipher. Um, let me see here. And is the requirements the same for a graduate as an undergraduate? So if you have a graduate degree, uh, you do need to have a um, 3.5 GPA. Um, and depending on what type of graduate degree you have, there may be an opportunity to actually transfer in some credits. Um, but that's something we'd have to evaluate and um, send to the program for them to, to let us know what we'd be able to transfer in. Um, 
So Counseling Psychology 4.0, that's a good one I would suggest when you make application. You note that, and if you have transcripts, even unofficial, send those in, and we can get um, we can get um, an evaluation done. Um, acceptance rate. Um, we again, we have three different um, interview dates, and on average, we have uh, roughly. Um, 50 to 60 actual interviewees. Um, and normally we're somewhere in the 70 to 90 applications. So some fall out along the way um, or change their mind because they're going in a different direction. So if we say that uh, on average, we interview 60 people, uh, we only start again, 18 to 19 students, but we do accept um, roughly 20 to 22 students in the event that any of those that are formally admitted um, can't start. So we have, in essence, a wait list. So hopefully that may answer your question. Any other questions? All right, so you have, can someone who studied psychology, spiritual therapy and counseling apply for a PsyD in clinical psychology? As long as you meet um, the undergraduate requirements and the entrance requirements, absolutely. Um, and another question, do you have residencies near or at the university? We do not have them at the university. We absolutely have them nearest. And now when I say nearest, that's relevant to how far you say near is. Um, any other questions? All right, I think we are done then. So thank you everybody for attending. Uh, I hope I shared with you what you needed and please reach out to us if you have other questions, uh, either myself or currently a gentleman by the name of Stephen Showalter. We will absolutely um, spend as much time with you and answer all the questions we can to help you make a decision on whether you wanna to apply to Divine Mercy or not. Thank you and have a great evening.